Hey, David Maliniak back at, at uh, CES 2023 in, in Las Vegas. I'm in the Knowles suite and uh, Nikolai Skovorodnikov, he's a senior apps engineer. He is going to give us a couple of demos of their products. So uh, first product we're launching at CES this year is a voice vibration sensor. The problem we're trying to solve is uh, having a, vo a phone call in a loud environment using a wireless um, Bluetooth headset. So uh, if you use a conventional microphone, then uh, the sensor will be picking up any sound, whether it is yourself speaking or a distractor or wind noise, anything happening around you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot of times the speech becomes not intelligible and people on the other side of the phone call are having troubles understanding what you're trying to say. So the way to solve this is to introduce a vibration sensor. Uh, th this way, the sensor will be picking up only the content associated with the voice of the, of the speaker. And also you can do additionally user authentication, meaning that you get the data only from the speech of the person wearing the earbud, not somebody standing next to you. All right. So here I have a demonstration device. We have a mock-up headset. You see there's a porthole. Uh, there's a microphone integrated inside and right next to it, there is a vibration sensor. Uh, I am going to put it in my ear and uh, do a recording. To simulate a windy condition, I'm gonna use a fan and um, one, one, two, three, four, five. That's enough. So now I'm going to play back the data recorded just by the microphone itself. One, two, so you hear a lot of wind gusts and the audio quality is very poor. People will have troubles understanding what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Second, I'm going to play back the data recorded by vibration sensor. This is the data picking up from the vibration of my of my body. Uh, due to mechanical coupling limitations, we're only using the data below two kilohertz. Mm -hmm. It's not a professional recording device, so don't expect amazing audio quality, but what we're trying to get here is intelligent Int speech. Intelligibility, for, sure. Yes, for the phone call use case. One, two, three, four, five. So notice how the wind noise is completely removed and yes. we, it's only my voice that's coming through. So for the best results, it's actually good, best to blend uh, high frequency microphone data with mm -hmm. low frequency vibration sensor data. And this way we're gonna have uh, both high and low end in the speech while still being immune from the wind noise. Here's the blended result. One, two, three, four, five. So this way the speech doesn't sound muffled, it sounds natural. Yeah. You have entire frequency presence and still it's much more clear compared to just using the microphone. Very good. So this is the first demo for a voice vibration sensor. In this demo, we're talking about the microphones purposely designed and built for uh, true wireless headsets for active noise cancellation and transparency mode. So uh, TWS, a true wireless uh, headset design is a challenging uh, the challenging problem. Very small form factor, very small battery, power uh, power restrictions, as well as great expectations from consumers for mm -hmm. amazing performance. At Knowles, we connected key microphone specifications that must be optimized to provide the best possible active noise cancellation experience. Right. Uh, we're launching two models here, one analog, one digital, uh, with uh, optimized performance for this application. And for demonstration today, we will uh, look at airplane use case. You will hear three clips. First is open ear experience. Second is passive attenuation. Imagine you have an uh, earbud in your ear. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ANC turned on and you will hear the uh, noise reduction. Okay. This is open ear, uh, what it sounds like without anything. Next, the person puts the bud in the ear. High frequency attenuation is obvious, but the low frequency rumbling is still there. And now ANC is going to turn on. Clearly improvement and uh, great uh, comfort for the user. Very good. Next, let's talk about the transparency mode. People use uh, true wireless devices for many hours throughout the day. And uh, sometimes you need to quickly listen to something or talk to somebody. Instead of taking the uh, device in and out of your ear, you can push the button 
and uh, here the environment around your microphone picks up the sound and plays it directly into the ear. Mm -hmm. In this mode there is a side effect of uh, sometimes noticeable transparency mode hiss. This is electronic noise that becomes uh, quite annoying to the user. Microphone is a noise source and with every generation we work on optimizing the sensors so the noise floor is lower and lower. Mm -hmm. uh, this year at CES we're launching sensors uh, both analog and digital size, 68.5 uh, dB SNR. And uh, for the demo here, we have a comparison of a transparency mode experience. First, the previous generation microphone, uh, and followed up by the transparency mode experience with the uh, new generation microphones that we're launching. And you can hear the reduction in the hiss. Cries to catch her whose busy care is bent to follow that which flies before her face. Cries to catch her whose busy care is bent to follow that which flies before her face. It's not necessarily absolute uh, amplitude of the, of the transparency mode hiss that is <laughs> critical, but think about it in terms of situations when it will be noticeable. If environment is loud enough, you won't notice it. But what is the range of use cases where the transparency mode experience will be truly see seamless and will not have noticeable hiss. Okay. So with the higher SNR microphones, with higher signal noise ratio, lower noise, latest generation sensors, you can improve experience for the users. So for this demo, we're talking about the content creator use case. Anybody buying modern consumer electronics in the store is expecting to be able to make a video, put it online, and it should sound amazing. It should sound as good as professionally done by a cinema producer. So, um, any microphone is loud in this limit. Input amplitude increases, there is more and more nonlinearities and imperfections in the output of the sensor. Um, for first, let's uh, consider a 10% distortion limit. So, this is typically associated with a hard clipping point, and if there is more than 10% distortion in the output of the microphone, the audio quality is unacceptable and sounds really bad. Here's a comparison of uh, two microphone recording. One was more than 10% uh, distortion compared to the one that is still linear. So the difference is obvious and the 10% distortion is too much. Mm -hmm. That's the statement that this, this aspect must not be ever violated and we should uh, use the microphones with a high, uh, with low distortion and the, uh, so that the, uh, they hit that 10% limit at only very loud SPL levels. Mm -hmm. Now, things that used to be not important in the industry back in the day, such as 10% spec that was around for ages, uh, are replaced by new specs that are driven by new applications and new expectations of consumers. Mm -hmm. This year at CES, we're talking about 1% distortion specification. The value here is twofold. First is listening. Um, if you look at big consumer brands, a big trend is lossless audio or professional grade audio or 24-bit mm -hmm. playback. Along the same lines, you want to make sure that uh, microphone distortion is below 1% so that even a very picky user with good gear in a good environment will not be able to notice any distortion introduced by the microphone. Okay. Secondly is algorithm value. If there's any distortion in microphone output, it will uh, basically be an uh, unwanted error signal that enters the processing by the algorithm. And active noise cancellation, beamforming, uh, keyword margin wake up, just a few examples of the uh, algorithms that will be sensitive to uh, presence of uh, distortion. Mm -hmm. Just a simple example here on the slide, this is a cardio and beamforming pattern. Uh, polar plot was the preferred direction for listening from the top and non-preferred direction from the bottom. You can see that the curves in green are low distortion cases and as distortion of the microphone increases, you can see the degradation of the polar plot and uh, the algorithm is just not effective. It is not able to separate good directions from unwanted directions. And so even though you might not be obviously able to tell that distortion is too high in terms of audio quality, but suddenly you cannot uh, cancel out the distractor anymore because the beamformer is not working. So but with that being said, 1% distortion level is a critical specification for the sensors. We're putting it on all our documentation, data sheets, and for example, Robin here, our new microphone, uh, with the um, 
it will have distortion less than 1% all the way up to 130 dB SPL, providing an amazing uh, dynamic range as a microphone. This is a demo showcasing what is possible to achieve using Knowles hardware with combined with the processing of our of, from one of our partners, Fluent AI, who, provi who provided the algorithm for uh, voice processing here. A uh, demonstration device here is a, a washing machine with voice control. So there is a keyword recognition here, and with my voice, I will be able to uh, set the machine to into different modes. Hi, Anita. Water level high. Yes, so it recognized the keyword and uh, turn on the LED so it recognized the correct command. So, um, oh, yeah, this is the, uh, the, the demo for the, uh, for the washing machine uh, use case. Right. And it's also running uh, uh, audio processing on the hardware from Nulls as well, not only the microphones.